don't go live about, well, not on this platform, but my other channel that I have um, has not reached a thousand subscribers, so I cannot go live on there. But I'm going to put this in a category of luxury. Um, the Timothy Simpkins case. Uh, or I'm not going to say case. Yeah, I guess I will say case. But the situation has definitely been weighing on me quite a bit. Y'all forgive if it's crooked. Forgive the lighting. I'm in my bedroom. My bedroom has the worst lighting ever. And I'm on an iPad. Like the newest iPad. So charge to my head, not to my heart. I feel some type of way about the Tim Timothy Simpkins case. I'm... What they call 50 cent in one hand, half a dollar in the other. That's what my grandmother used to say. Because it's like the same thing. Or you feel two ways about one thing. See, the same thing or you feel two different ways about, about the situation. Timothy Simpkins, if you do not know, he goes to Timber Lake. I think that's what it's called. Timberland. No, it's Timber Lake. Timberview, I'm sorry. It's Timberview High School. I think it's in Arlington, Texas. I think that's what it was. Um... And he's a teenager accused of opening fire after a fight. Um, opening fire after a fight. And he is now out of jail and back at home. Um, this was in Arlington, Texas. This happened about two days ago. So he's now out on bond. He got out on bond today, I think. I think it was today. And... I'm in the midst, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle. I have a teenager who is not the same age as Timothy Simpkins, but he is close, and he's a high school student. Timothy Simpkins injured three people. One, the third victim was released. Yeah, this happened on Wednesday. So the third victim was released on a Wednesday when the shooting happened. The other, the second or another victim, which was victim number two, was a teacher. And the teacher is doing well, even though they were injured. The third victim was another student who's 15, year old, 15 years old, a black student. And was shot four times in the arm, in the chest. And the, let me see, chest, arm, stomach, and leg. So... I'm in between a rock and a hard place on this, and I'm gonna tell you why. My son's school, where I live, has had since the beginning of the school year. The school has been in about two months now, and they have had a, a literally a shootout. And we actually live in a very decent neighborhood, um, but they actually had a shootout in in front of the school where the school was on lockdown. The high school is right next to the middle school, literally right next door. Like I could walk. Not even five minutes from the high school to the middle school. Um, so they're literally on the same block. The interest, you know, they're on the same block or whatever. Um, there was a shootout in front. There was, um, so the school was locked down. Somebody brought a weapon to school. School was locked down. There was threats made on social media. The school was locked down. Um, actually, there has been several threats made on social media. The school was locked down. Most of those times, I did not send my son to school because... I was scared for his life, right? He's also what you would consider new, even though he went to school there last year. But, you know, with COVID, there was no um, school, like in-person school. Like everything was virtual. So pretty much, even though he's a sophomore, he's pretty much like, a, you know, he don't really know a lot of people. Um, there's most of his friends have transferred to other schools and um, all that. They've transferred out of schools. Parents have put them in private school. Like, all that. I, I guess I don't see the reason to put them in private school when he only got two years left. So, I'm trying to, I guess, make the best out of it. Also, there has, they've added metal detectors. Not only do they have the police, they got security and hall monitors. It, the list goes on. All right. So, not only do they have to deal with wearing a mask, COVID, and staying healthy, they got to worry about staying alive. So the part of me that disagrees with Timothy Simpkin is like we got to find other ways to handle situations. We got to find other ways to handle situations. 
to other situations. I mean, situations like this. Now, his mother, his mother and family, I don't know if that was his mother. Um, his mother, or I guess his family was saying that he, um, he, uh, um, was being bullied a lot, a lot. Uh, Bonafide, the Colorado kid said, um, hello, how are you? How are you doing? I'm talking about Timothy Simpkins. If you do not know, he is the, uh, 18 year old African-American student, or he was a student at Timberview High School in Arlington, Texas, who brought a gun to school because he was being bullied, uh, and, well, the, what the news said, allegedly he was being bullied and he injured three people. So nobody died. And that is a blessing. Um, however, I don't know what was done on the parents' behalf. I know when it comes to my kid and there has been times that he's been bullied you know, I'm up at the, when I, when I do find out I'm at the school, I'm talking to people, I'm having conversations, um, you know, and I have taken my son, my son has had, went to several schools, several schools, because I've taken my son out. My son has been bullied by students, have been bullied by teachers and principal. I'm taking my son out and don't catch me, at, don't catch me outside. Because what normally happens to our, you know, African Americans is where the fingers always point at you. So if I would have done something to retaliate, it would have just looked so much worse on not only myself but my my family. So I've taken my son out of school. My son has been to several schools. When we lived in Tennessee. He went to like seven different schools, just in Nashville, Tennessee, because of bullying, because of you know teachers and principals not doing their part. So like I don't play that about the bullying. My daughter, when she was in kindergarten, um, was another black boy was always in her face and everything. And come to find out, we found out he just liked her. But we got to start teaching our kids boundaries too. Like my daughter is very smart. She is um, what you would consider on a gifted spectrum. And I did quotes like that because people have something to say when you talk about your children being gifted and everything and she's very quiet she does what she's supposed to do literally like she's been this her third year in school she in second grade and every teacher has been like she is a pleasure to have i wish i had a whole class full of her she does what she's supposed to do she handles business she does the work she gets the job done so on and so forth so for this little boy to be in her face i knew it wasn't nothing that she was doing now she different at home she a whole she uh hell on wheels at home but in school she does what she's supposed to do so I made it very clear to her, like, you, you know, tell him, speak up for yourself. Tell him you don't like that. Get out your face to then tell the teacher if, if that doesn't, you know, get him out your face, whatever. And I would meet you at the principal office. And she literally almost cried because I was pretty much telling her, like, to not have him, like, you know, not physically hurt him, but like move him out. She doesn't deserve for him to just be in her bubble, to be right here in her face. You know, right here. She doesn't deserve that. And I told her I'll meet her in the principal's office and we'll go get McDonald's or Subway afterwards, period. So back to the Timothy Simpkins situation. I wouldn't want my son in a situation where there's a shootout at school. And it don't got nothing to do with him and he's an innocent bystander. You know, they even had, well, this was two weeks ago, a young man in our city that we live in, right next door to an elementary school, literally, like the pole he was shot at, was here the high school the the elementary school was my closet which is right there literally steps away and he they just walked up on him and shot him and killed him so like that whole you know bringing vi gun violence and all that like it's kind of a touchy subject for me because i feel as if there's other ways there's other ways to figure this thing out so now not on i mean he was being bullied i'm not gonna say i mean timothy simpkins was being bullied do i believe he was being bullied yes do i believe the teachers or anybody or uh did anything absolutely not absolutely not most especially in the south absolutely not they don't really do a whole bunch of stuff about bullying 
And I don't care if it's an all-black school. I don't care if it's an all-white school. They do not do much about bullying. Nope. They don't do much about bullying. Y'all about to go live on fight on, on Instagram as well. Abby you need help with Abby at you? Yes. You can can you go get your tablet please? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, she wait for me to wash her hair. Uh Bonafide says he's not a school shooter. He just got fed up. Like you said, nobody died. Thank you, Jesus. Low self esteem, unheard. I don't know why I keep disappearing. There we go. Um, unheard, unguided, and twisted sense of, of wrong or right. True. True. I, I, I agree. I don't think he is. Um, let me see if I turn this. Rotate back. Okay. Sorry, y'all. It's not letting me turn it either or keep the chat up. I don't know why it's not letting me keep the chat up. I don't know why it's not letting me keep the chat up, y'all. That's weird. Okay, go ahead. Go find him. Um, I don't think he's a school shooter either at all, by all means. Like, definitely. I definitely agree with you. I don't think he's a school shooter at all. However, I have a high school student that's 15 years old. And I'm going to be honest... I, if my child would have been one of the innocent, even though it was only, even though it was only three, I would have been upset and I would have wanted justice. I'm just going to be honest with you. Do I think that Timothy Simpkins was unheard? Absolutely. Like you said, and unguided. But then at that point, who, who takes responsibility for that? Cause he 18 now. He not a child. He 18 now. So who, if you're being bullied and either, and it seems like he was speaking up for himself because his family knew he was being bullied. So that means where the, the parents to speak up for they speak up for their kid. If the community is not doing something, I have done it. Take your kids out of school. If you got a home, if you got a, there's online, there's, there's so many options that you can exhaust. Take him out of school, do online schooling. I'm be honest. We're in a different. We're in a different situation now. Where get your GED. The a bachelor's degree don't mean nothing right now. So get your GED. Get your GED if you got to. If if if, if they're not gonna do what they're supposed to do, because we can't make the school district do what they're supposed to do. They have so many ways to lie and be underhanded and all that. So the school district wasn't doing what they were supposed to do then why would you know why, why would i continue to allow my kids to go to school and it did say that it was after a fight so did he already have the weapon so there's so many things i kind of like want to know like the 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 article i read um was that it was after a fight so I, i'm not sure about that like i'm not sure if it was it um what happened with that aspect i just i i now he's ruined his life like the, there was two white boys like three weeks ago in florida um oh, okay bonafide i definitely definitely um it's actually not okay it says It says, I'm a single father, 10 kids, six girls, and I don't know why it's acting like this, but six girls and four boys. I've laced my kids up out of school shooting situation. I'm in Colorado. We've had numerous school shootings over the last two decades. You ain't lying on that one. You ain't, you're, 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 I agree with you 100%. I definitely gave my, I had to, like, we got to have those conversations now, right? You thought it was just, you know, um, being intimate with each other and maybe some illegal you know um drugs or something but now we gotta talk to our kids about school shootings and you know not just regular bullying but cyber bullying and i definitely had a conversation with my son about like school shootings and 
you know, you never know someone's situation. You never know what's going on at home to then, um, you know, what they could do and bring back to school. And, you know, you just never know. So mind your business. I'm not telling you to keep your head low. I'm telling me people, you know, use your discernment, but mind your business. Don't don't bully nobody. Don't bully nobody. Don't don't make somebody feel bad because you wouldn't want that. Leave it at that. The Timothy Simpkins situation, I definitely, like I said, I'm 50 cent on one hand, half it on the other. I definitely believe that you can be fed up. And when you're fed up, it's it's statistically that like, like your brain begins to kind of either come up with its own mechanisms, like it, your emotions on a high, like it, it's kind of like your body, your your insides does its own thing, right? And so I definitely believe he may have been misguided or unguided on her. But like I said, then whose fault does that roll on? How long has this bullying been going on? Because because the family of the victim that was shot four times, they want justice. They want justice. They want him in prison for attempt to murder. Because he brought the weapon to the school. How does like... They want justice, and I'm gonna be honest. As a parent, I would want I would I would want justice too. I would want justice too. At the same token, my son has definitely been in situations where he was being bullied by not only a student at the school, and then there was been other situations where he's been bullied by the teachers and the principal. They wouldn't return my calls or nothing. I snatched my son out of there so quick, so quick. Did whatever I had to do, and I'm not saying nothing like illegal or whatever, to get him in another school somewhere else. Now, I was definitely fortunate enough to do that. Um, I didn't like pay for private school or anything, but I'm just saying like. His family is saying that he was being bullied. If y'all knew that, what, what were y'all doing? Were y'all saying anything? Were y'all just saying fight it out? There's so many options now compared to like back in the day when there was no option. There was no online school and there was no, you know, homeschool and none that wasn't a big deal. Like, I, I guess I'm the type of, and I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm saying that we got to start thinking outside the box, especially um, as our, you know, our generation with children. We got to start thinking outside of our box. You may not be able to, to afford for him to go to private school. Okay, cool. But there's definitely free online schooling. Especially in the state of Texas. Most of the southern states, they, they can do K-12. through That's free online schooling. Free. Take him out. Let him get his GED. There were, there's just so many other options, you know. Um Bonafide says, educate your kids. Sucks, but it has to be done. My kids treat school like it, like the streets, the hood, the ghetto. Always on alert. I agree with that. I agree with that. Always on alert, no matter what. Never let your guard down. I agree with that. I agree that, you know, you, 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 you got to keep, you, you got to stay alert. I worked in corporate America for uh, five, six years. And, you know, they waited, the way that the, the company treated people. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't surprised that somebody didn't try to come in there and do something. So I literally always had a plan of how I would get out of that joker. I always had like an extra bag with my, you know, I kept my phone on silent and I kept it in a in very close proximity to me. Because they treated people horribly. And I wouldn't be surprised if people didn't come in there and try to act crazy. And then anybody could get hurt in, um, you know, just in, in the line of trying to get out or whatever. I always had a plan. Um, I'm from what you would call the neighborhood, uh, emphasis on the hood. And it's, it was an all black school. I don't know if Timberview is an all black school, but I, I'm from an all black school. I feel like we never had to worry about gun violence in a school. Did we have to worry about gun violence in the streets? Yes, we did. Because we did lose a lot of our students in the streets, but never at the school. That was one place I actually felt safe was at school. My son goes to a diverse school. There's all cultures hispanic african americans africans um you know caucasian there's all cultures and all type of threats 
this year, just in the first two months. All type of threats. Now, three weeks ago, or a month, about a month ago, two middle school boys, they were Caucasian, white, one was 13, one was 14, was making plans to shoot their middle school, like have a school shooting at the middle school, specifically like Columbine, specifically like Columbine. One was 14, one was 13. All they got was juvenile. They got about 15 to 18 days in juvenile, and that's it. These are, you know, these are good boys. These boys had access to multiple weapons. They had the plans of the school. Like, they had everything written down. The 13-year-old was the mastermind. The 14-year-old boy was the, he must have either, been, you know, just really wanted friendship. So, he was willing to do whatever that the younger boy said. Nothing happened to him, to them, besides a few days in juvie. It was in Florida. Um, it did make national news, but nothing really happened to them. Nothing happened to them. Nothing happened to them. And so this is where that other 50 cent comes in. Timothy Simpkins, first of all, he didn't kill anybody, thank goodness. Um, second of all, he was being bullied. And the way the parents were speaking about it, or the family was speaking about it, is that it's on record that he was being bullied. And... You know, now he's going to, he may go to prison for the rest of his life or for a long period of time because there was definitely other options that could have been done. But the other, the two white middle school, the two boys, middle school boys, they're not being charged. They're not being charged. A 14-year-old could technically be charged as an adult. I think in the state of Florida, I know every state is different. I think in the state of Florida, you could be charged as, a, as an adult. They're not being charged at all. But Timothy, and I know they didn't go through with the actual, the actual um, act of the shooting. But it's no different that if you're riding with somebody and they jump out and rob somebody and you didn't even, you know, you didn't even know. You're the driver, you know, you didn't even know. But you get sentenced just as much as they do. So they should get sentenced, attempt or something. Charge with attempt or something. Okay, so Bonafide says teach your kids how to read people. Come on. I, I talk about I talked about discernment. All people are age are race personality, so they are at least a step ahead. Um I I think that that I think that's definitely a great thing. And I was talking about discernment. However, I don't think that has anything to do with um has anything to do with Timothy. Timothy knew that his the person that was bullying him. Person that was making him feel some type of way. I don't I don't think Timothy was originally the aggressor. I don't think, you know, like you said, I don't think that wasn't a school shooting. Because normally in a school shooting, you taking everybody out. It don't matter. He specifically you know, shot this one kid, you know, this one kid. There was a teacher as well, and then another victim. They didn't say that the victim was a student. Or an adult, maybe, you know, administrator or something like that. I think they would have said another adult. Maybe it was a student. I don't know. I did see on TikTok, though, there was a recording of the like of them being in a school and you could hear the shooting. And the kids was trying to, you know, trying to get out or whatever. You could hear the shooting. The bangs were loud and everything. Um, like, I, I, I don't I don't want this for Timothy at all. Like, I feel bad for him. I feel real bad for him. I feel bad for him. I feel like, you know, I wish the other adults in his life who knew about this because the way they got up there in front of, you know, when they did that press conference as if they knew he was being bullied. If you knew he was being bullied, why didn't y'all take the necessary steps? If y'all knew he was being bullied, why didn't y'all do what y'all needed to do to help him out of that situation. And then if y'all didn't. I mean. It, and if y'all didn't know. Then unfortunately. That's Timothy's situation. You know. It happens. Teenagers keep things from their parents. Especially like bullying. You know. Uh, relationships. Things like that. But the way they got up there and talked. Was that they knew. That he was being bullied. They knew that he. Um, was having these troubles. 
So in that note, what did y'all do? Did y'all go to the school? Because if that's the case, then there's a lawsuit because if the school didn't do nothing, then the school is at fault. Because that boy is a high school student. So if he missed school so many times, it's truancy. The parents are at so you know if they were talking, if they did let the school know, then you know it's school fault, and I would be suing the school. But I didn't hear nothing about that. I didn't see. I didn't hear nothing about that. Now there is, I think, a GoFundMe for him because he's out on bond, seventy five thousand dollars. So he out, um, and it was the you know trying to the, the reporters were trying to get him to say something, be be aggressive. You could tell he not that dude. You could tell he not that dude. Timothy Simpkins is in a very hard place. He's in a very tough situation. It doesn't help that he's 18, so he's going to be charged as an adult. It doesn't help that what it seems like, what it seems. Again, I'm not there. I don't under, I, you know, I don't know all the things of the, of the case, but it just seems like a lot of people kind of let him down when it comes to bullying. And that's the part that breaks my heart because now he's gonna pay for he's gonna pay for it. He's the African American, you know, young adult. They're gonna make sure he pays for it. And he in Texas. You know? Uh Bonafide says, I feel like um hold on. I don't know why it keeps not letting me do that. It says, I feel like maybe it was more of a statement rather than a shock value. He shot them in front of everybody, letting everybody know no more. This ends here. He could. He'd have killed them, but didn't. He's not a killer. I agree. He's not a killer. Uh, but the, the boy that is. That he shot four times in the arm, chest, stomach and leg. He has to have two or three surgeries. He's in a medically induced coma. He has to have two or three surgeries if, you know, Lord forbid, if and I think that boy name was like Zacharias or something like that. If the one that was shot four times, if he does not come out of that, then we got a whole nother situation. Timothy, like, like I said, I feel I feel like that if the parents knew because they made this statement, he was being bullied. Timothy isn't Timothy is not a school shooter. He don't, you know, so on and so forth. I get that 100 percent. Then what was everybody else doing? I didn't hear them say, you know, um, we talked to the school. I didn't hear them say none of that. I And now he has to deal with this for the rest of life. Like he going to be known and they're going to continue to, even though he's not a shooter, they're going to continue to put him as a school shooter. <clears throat> they're going to continue to label him as a school shooter. And that's the, that's the, that's even the worst part about this. 18 years old he doesn't go to the, he can't go around the victims he can't go um to the school he won't be able to graduate like and i'm not saying that those things are so important but as an 18 year old senior junior or senior those things do, you know you don't have a you know you don't you don't have a whole bunch of bills or for the most part those things are important to you Just really wish he would have chose a different route. <clears throat> and not shot that person like. Or shot anybody. Shot anybody like it. I would rather, rather him dropped out and found a job and fit in in. Than this. And just refuse to go to school. Then. You know. Shooting him. Bonafide says. Hopefully the kid doesn't die. The biggest lesson. Biggest lesson of his life. Timothy has another lesson that. I'm more than sure he's going to have to come to grips with. What you think that lesson is? What is that other lesson he's going to come to grips with? Um, Timothy Simpkins, he's not a school shooter. He's not a killer. He's a fed up kid who didn't have the right support behind him about being bullied. Somebody should have stood up for him. Somebody should have. And I'm talking about the parentals, whoever he's around. 
Because how did he how did he get the weapon? Are they just, you know, which I know uh, you can have weapons in your house. Am I actually making uh, excuses for the child? Actually, no, I just said that if my child was hard, harmed um, in the, if my child was harmed in the way of the school shooting, I would want justice. I just said that. I just said the situation is between a rock and a hard place. But maybe you came in late, so. I'm not trying to come at you negative. I was just saying, like, I, earlier I said that if my child, because there was three victims, there was the ch the student that got shot four times. That is in, like, they got him in a medically induced coma. There was a the teacher who was actually doing well but was injured. And then there was another person that was shot. It just say victim. It don't release the person's information. If it's a student, if it's a uh, faculty or whatever, that person was treated and released on Wednesday when the shooting took place. So... I said it from the beginning, like, is he guilty for just being a aggressor or, you know, is he in, was he in a situation, he, you know, where he should just made a better choice or doing something else? Um, I lived in the South for six or seven years, and I'm going to be honest, one of the reasons I left the South, my top reason, I didn't say it was justified at all. I just said that um, there should have been other options. Even if he would have to come out to school and take his GED, even if he would have quit school, I'd rather him quit school than, you know, taking, taking some, you know, putting other people in harm's way. Uh, bringing a gun to school is definitely not the T. Um, okay, so... It says, I'm just, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got to go back up. Sorry. Okay, it says, are you actually making excuses for the child's actions, which I just talked about? I'm scared that people are saying that this action was justified regardless of how bullied you may have been, have been taking another's life or intending to never justify outside of self-defense. I'm not saying you did. Oh, okay. I get it now. Um, I'm talking about social media response by so many people defending his actions. So, um... So that's why I said I'm in between a rock and a hard place. I have a 15 year old teenager that um, in, since school started two months ago, it's been, you know, it was a, literally a shootout in front of the school. And I don't live in nowhere near a bad area at all, like at all, a very diverse neighbor neighborhood that I live in. Um, um, My son is walking distance from the school. So like. It was a shootout in front of school. Literally last week, a student at the sh school, literally somebody walked up to him and shot him and killed him. Um, there has been weapons brought to the school. Like, it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I would want, I have to talk to my son about, like, safety when it comes to school shooting. Definitely, definitely have. The next thing is, is that I would, if my son, my child was um, the person that was just injured, in the midst of this school shooting, I would want justice. I said that. That's why I said it's 50 one and half on the other. The other part of me understands the South and the bullying when it comes to the African-American culture. We, I lived in the South. We moved to the South. My son was in the third grade up until the ninth grade. He went to about eight to nine different schools throughout those seven years because he had been bullied by students. I took him out. There was there was a, a principal and his teacher was bullying him. They wouldn't return my calls. They wouldn't order. I took him out. Now, very for I very true. I was fortunate to do that, and we find some other uh, ways to do that. But I was willing to lose my job. I was willing to whatever it took for my son to be safe and know that him being a young black man was a, was more than enough. I was willing to do that. The way Timothy Simpkins' family got on the press conference and said that he was being bullied made me feel like they knew he was being bullied. This wasn't the first time. So with that being said, the community is behind him because what happens is with being African-American, you don't get the same resources as someone else who is not African-American, who is white. That's just That's just the reality of it. You don't always get the same resources. They don't treat you the same. When I was in Tennessee, there was three different young kids, young black children who took their life because of bullying. The school wouldn't do anything. 
And I'm talking about like not 16, 17. I'm talking about like 11, 12. One was 12. I think one was 11 and one was 10. Took their life. African-American children took their life because of bullying. Pa and these children were telling their parents. The parents was going to the. Um, it's definitely about race. It's definitely about race. Me and my husband make good money. We're in definitely economically um, together. His family is not wealthy. He, I don't, not that what I saw. They didn't have resources. They did a GoFundMe for him. They didn't have resources. People put up money for him. So if he was bullied for being wealthy, okay, well, I ain't read nothing about him, him being wealthy. If that's the case, he was bullied being bullied about being wealthy, then they could have took him out. 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 They could have put him in private school. My kids to go to school. And it did say that it was after a fight. So did he already have... Hold on. The I'm sorry. So there's so many things that kind of like... Okay, so... That's the guy they could have took him out. They could have took him out. They could have allowed him to get GD. It's, it's definitely not ignorant. It's definitely not ignorant. It's definitely not. Because I don't care if you got money or not. You still going to be put. You're still going to be looked at how you looked at. You're still going to be looked at how you looked at. Regardless. 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 We were in the. We weren't. I wouldn't say wealthy. But we definitely was doing well for ourselves. You're still going to be put in a position in the South. In the South. It's not like that when I'm that I'm back in the Midwest. I don't feel like uh, I gotta have money to have the resources. In the South, we have we definitely had a definitely a nice situation going for us. And my son was bullied. How do you know he had a, a Dodge Charger? You saw it. You rode in it. I'm just at, like, I'm asking questions. Like, I'm not trying to be real. Like, I'm asking questions. You saw the charger? You saw the picture of him in the charger that he said it was his? It's his, it's literally his car? That's what you, you, you took the picture or you wrote in it? With the gun. So you saw him with the gun in front of a car that he said was his. Like, he's saying, oh, this is my car. His family said it was my car. That's what I'm saying. Like, Social media or social media could be. I'm what I'm. I'm asking questions. I'm the bit of yes, ma'am. Are you done? Yes. Okay, here I come. Social media could definitely be. Um, can be confusing. The family said it was his car. Well, the same family is the same family that got on there and said that they uh. He was being bullied and it was pretty much nothing. I, I wasn't speaking out of pocket. I didn't. I never said that they didn't have money. You're the one who brought up there have, have money. What I'm saying is it's still the facts are the, what it is. I Do I feel bad for him for being bullied and that nobody was doing so, something to help him? Yes. But if it was my child that was her, I would want justice. That's what this is about. It's not about money. It's not about none of that. Because regardless of how much money you got, you still could, you can still be put in that place. You can still be put in a place where you got to make a dire decision. Right then and right there. It has nothing to do with money. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there was other options outside of taking the gun to school. That's what I said. You should go back and read, the, listen to the beginning part of the live. That's what I said. It's not about money. It's not about none of that. But social media and people can say anything about anything. If you're not right there in the moment with it, you don't know if it's truthful or not. But they verbally said that he was being bullied. Regardless of what he was being bullied for, it doesn't even matter. The point of is there's other options outside of taking a gun to school. That was That's what it was. 
There was other options. And if my child was caught in a crossfire, I would want justice. But I also understand living in the South and regardless of how much money you got, you still are, you still don't have just as many resources as anyone else that doesn't look like you. And that is, that is the honest to God truth. The reason why I left the South, one of the main reasons why I left the South. So they didn't got nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. It's about choices. And if money was a thing, if money was an option, then they had other choices. But being bullied, if you've ever, have you ever been bullied? I didn't say black family don't have resources. I didn't say that. What I said that we don't have as many resources as when you're not black. You still don't have as many resources unless you like Jay-Z or Beyonce. Again, that doesn't matter. I'm uh, what whatever you think, but you know you can't be blocked, right? I'm just saying, like, you you're you're not coming here and think about both ends. Have you ever been bullied? Have you ever been bullied? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he had. Have you ever been bullied? That's the moral of the story. Have you ever been bullied? You know what it's like for somebody to taunt you and treat you like you're nothing regardless of how much money you have? have has that ever happened to you? I didn't. I, I, you still ain't answering my question. Again, have you ever been bullied? You still ain't answered that question. It doesn't matter. Have you ever been bullied? It it does, because this is about bullying. The family said that he's been bullied. Regardless of what he's been bullied for, the ultimate thing was he was being bullied. So if he was being bullied, there's definitely other options outside of bringing a gun to school. So that was what he chose to do. He felt like his back was against the wall. Regardless of how many resources you have, if you're being bullied, a lot is going on in your mind. They don't have the same reasons as white people. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care if you Jay, you or you got to be on the status of Jay Z, Beyonce. Black people, I don't care how much money you have, you don't have the same resources as white people, and that's period. No, I don't care how much money you have. No. Again, you still haven't answered the question. We don't have the same resource, which is why we are going through the things that we're going off, going through generation after generation, decade after decade. You still haven't said how much money, I mean, if you've ever been bullied, because that's what this is about. Period. And I'm sad that you don't understand that if you are African-American person, But he still ain't said that if he was being bullied, my child has been bullied. We make really good money. Now, are we just being but Jay-Z and Beyonce? No, but the point of the matter is, is that you can still be bullied no matter what you make, no matter what you have. People are still going to say something about you. And depending on who you are and how strong you are, depends on how you react. So... We're going to go back and let's do um report. <laughs> um so the point of the matter is is that uh Yeah, bonafide, and that's the problem. Like, uh, most of the my my community, my close friends, they're you know, um, regardless of they're single or married, they make really good money. Most of their children, you know, a lot of children are in private school or in areas where either you know they have a really good education system. Um, business owners, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, college educated. Some of them are not college educated and making very good money. 
all these things and they're they have had experiences where their children are being bullied doesn't matter the money and if you're living in a half a million dollar house what does that matter you know the part is that young man was being bullied but i do believe there were other options that's just the truth it's other options that is the honest to god truth there was other options now, but I do understand when you're being bullied, your back is up against the wall. Like, you feel like you have no way out. Now, I wasn't bullied growing up. Well, in middle school, I was, though. In middle school, I was. Come on, little baby. In middle school, I was. Definitely was. I definitely was. Hold on just a second. You probably still hear me, but I had to move the screen. In middle school, I was bullied. Go ahead, baby. In middle school, I was bullied. Mommy, mommy, yes. Go, go. In middle school, I was bullied. And I really wanted to hurt myself. Like, I wanted to hurt myself. I wanted to hurt myself. And there was nothing like... Oh, Summer, this is what, what, what you were saying. Here, Summer, go ahead, Abby, that hatcher. Thank you. You're welcome. Pull up, pull up. Hey, pull up. So I wanted to hurt myself when I was in middle school. Now when I got to high school, I kind of grew into myself, so then that, it didn't happen like that. But when I was in middle school, I was being bullied. And um, by this tall girl who actually we end up you know, being cool, like, at the time. But the point of the matter is, I was being bullied. And I really wanted to hurt myself. I used to pray to God about, like, making me look different. Like, it was a whole thing. Like, me too. Well, I'm going to say my whole childhood, but that's why I am who I am. Now, I don't play exactly, exactly by the fact. That's why I don't play. I don't care, like, like I said, I don't care what your economic status is, right? I have one, um family i know that you know they make good money they got a nice house um all that and their daughter goes to private school and she goes to a predominantly white private school you know there is some african-americans there and there was a time you know people would say things to her oh no I, this this wasn't at the private school that's why actually her parents put her back in private school she was going to this is in, during covid and she was going to like like the community school still a very good area but it was it was not as many children that looked like hers. African American family, um, beautiful little girl, you know. But she was being, she was you know like asked you know told her her skin was ugly. Like why your skin so dark? And she wasn't a dark little girl, you know. And immediately her parents took her out, put her back in private school. Immediately, now thank goodness it was at the end of the school year, so she didn't need to go the last few days anyway. But put, put her right back in private school. Now, I don't care how wealthy you are, you can still get bullied. The way you look, how you have your hair. You know, if you don't meet the standard, you can still get bullied. So I, I, I know that feeling. I know that gut feeling. I know you feel like your back is against the wall. I know that. It actually brings me, you know, chills to me because sometimes you feel like like your your mind i want to say your mind playing tricks on you i wouldn't say that but you feel like you don't have any other choice it's either take your life or take somebody else's life because you don't want to have those feelings anymore like you gotta you people gotta be you know people gotta be open-minded about situations like doesn't matter about the economic status it doesn't that has nothing to do with you being a good person nothing at all timothy doesn't didn't seem like he was a bad person again i don't know him personally i wasn't there i wasn't in a situation but it just doesn't seem like he was a bad person it doesn't seem like he you know was the aggressor at the same token i would have wanted him to choose something else choose something different drop out if you had to yeah i'm hold on sir how can i help you 
<laughs> okay, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to end this live. Um, I actually got business to take care of. I have a meeting here. And so um, I'm just saying, what do y'all think? Do y'all think Timothy, the bullying went too far? And then this is the outcome and he didn't have no help or support or he should just get charged and obtain. I just wanted to say you are amazing. I watch all your views all the time. This is my first time live with you. I love you and all your content and support you no matter what. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Bonafide, I appreciate it. I really do. Um, you have a great day and continue to support your babies. And I'm praying for you and your family. Y'all be sweet.